Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Devotional from West Lawn United Methodist Church. I am Carol Ann Schneiderhan, one of the staff, staff members at the church. The pastors asked some of us to help prepare a devotional to help give them a chance to take a break and some time away. When they asked me to do this devotional, they asked me to speak about a Bible verse or two that is somewhat of a life verse. For me, it was a toss up. So I'm going to share two passages that have provided me with guidance over the last couple of months. I immediately thought about Philippians 4, 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I have prayed that verse over and over again in the past several months, sometimes shortening it a bit to, Lord, give me strength. Or, Lord, give me the strength to hold my tongue. Or, when I hear criticism or suggestion that might conflict with my opinion, I have prayed, Lord, give me the strength to be loving and kind. Help me to be set apart. Give me the strength to do your will. Recently, I've been studying 1 Peter. I found this book to be an inspirational book, especially in the last couple of months, as we have been in various stages of separation from one another during this pandemic. Peter writes to the early Christians who were struggling from fear. They were often persecuted or separated from one another. And because of this fear and separation, they began to also feel separated from God. I imagine that they were becoming complacent in their faith, questioning, where is God in all of this? Perhaps they might have even started becoming a little nasty with each other from time to time, slipping into the norms of their society and culture. But Peter called them out. He called them out to be set apart, and he gave them tools and instructions for doing so, to find strength in the promise of the eternal victory they will receive because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He instructed them to continue to have faith. He suggested that the best way to show love was by their actions in tough times. <clears throat> Even in the midst of their difficulties, God had not abandoned them. Peter encourages the early believers to be set apart and also to become a bridge between the non-believers and God. We are not any different from the people Peter was instructing. And I believe he uses scripture to remind us to offer a connection to God with those around us. The way we conduct ourselves and show love to one another, the way we respond by actions or by our words, provide that very connection between the people in our circles with whom we communicate and with God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, I have found these verses to be particularly helpful. He states, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. Several months ago now, I had the opportunity to take a drive with some friends into Lancaster County, into the countryside, where we planned to serve, search for farm stands looking for deals on vegetables and local produce and stuff. And one of them drove us, she drove us to our favorite shop, a simple variety store in Lancaster County. So piquing our curiosity, we went inside, and there we found Nestled in the back of a building, in back of a house, a very unassum unassuming shop. But there, it was bustling with activity. As we entered into the door, I was amazed by the shelves with all kinds of things, from bag dried goods to cereal to cheese. And as I looked up, there were even unlit gas lights 
in the ceiling. There was an old manual cash register reminding me of simpler days of the past. And as we meandered down the rows of these shelves, my friend called me into the back room and she said that there was a lady that, we want, that she wanted to introduce us to. This little Mennonite woman, dressed in plain clothing, invited us to sit down and to join her and some others for coffee. There was nothing fancy about this space. A few mismatched chairs and some folding tables and a variety of coffee cups hanging on hooks on the wall. The woman's name was Leah. She had such a warm gift and genuine spirit of hospitality. During our time with her, she made us feel wonderfully welcomed, offering us some strong coffee, and she was very happy to serve us. As she did this, she stared, shared stories about her family and her, her friends and her farm. She invited us into an unrushed conversation. It was so warm and welcoming that it gave me kind of a sense of new friendship. And I knew someday I'd want to tell others about it and also return. Well, I did tell others about that shop and some of them also went to enjoy the hospitality of Leah in the days to come. In fact, I've returned to that store numerous times and so did some of the others I told about that store. Now the funny thing is about that, there was no postings on Facebook. There were no advertising luring us in. And there were no advertisements luring others in. What made us all want to return was the warmth of those who greeted us and spent quality time with us. <laughs> what a great life model that is. What a lesson this taught me. Leah had the natural gift of hospitality. But we could all try to exemplify this model, taking the time to really be present so that others genuinely want to come back into our space. The conversation was full of love, and so was her demeanor. Soon after we left that day, I found out that she had recently lost her husband before we visited. I would have never guessed that. And as I reflect upon that experience, I immediately recognized that she was a woman of faith. She had a strength in her spirit that was evident by her warmth and her kindness. She was not judgmental and she was eager to listen. She did not have to tell me about her faith. I knew she loved God by the way she treated others. In 1 Peter, the Apostle teaches that Christians need to be set apart and to proclaim God's purpose to the nations. Living as Christians in these times is not easy. I'm not always calm and I do not always have grace, that is for sure. I have read the verse, I can do all this through him who strengthens me many, many times. This verse and the verses from Peter continue to help me each day. Friends, let it be our goal and our responsibility to face difficult situations with patience and calmness and with confidence. It is our responsibility and our calling to pray, serve, and to be a blessing in times of distress and in times of crisis. No matter where we might be, I pray that we all might find the strength each day to demonstrate grace and a warm spirit as we work in the community and with our neighbors so that they might want to find out more about our Lord Jesus. Can I invite you to pray with me? Lord God, thank you for always walking with us. Thank you for loving us and for giving us the strength each day to do your will. Help us, Lord, to be stewards of your peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for this time together, and may God bless you and keep you until we meet again.